Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Skyview HDX Autopilot approved for Beechcraft Baron 58. Petition demands solutions to lack of ultralight instructors. 250th Honda Jet heads for the skies. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Skyview HDX Autopilot approved for Beechcraft Baron 58. Dynan Skyview HDX is now available for Beechcraft Baron 58 and 58As, offering a cost-effective upgrade and three-axis autopilot system. The system is capable of flying instrument approaches when combined with a compatible IFR nav device, which altogether packs quite a bit of capability into a flight deck. When added to an existing Skyview HDX, the three-axis autopilot lifts at $11,192 for the hardware, modules, servo harnesses, and brackets. Additional niceties like the autopilot control panel and knob control panel are extra. The former allows for a panel of AP controls for about $664, with the latter granting the kind of fine controls enjoyed by fastidious operators like altitude, heading, and altimeter settings. The suite can be found at any dining authorized installation center as usual, though operators can choose to order their gear direct from the manufacturer and have it put in by an installer of their choice. The announcement rides along with news for added functionality for Dynan certified autopilot lineup. Trim motor control and auto trim is now available on a number of systems, removing a restriction previously put in place on Cessna 182, Beach 35, Beach 36, Piper Seneca, and Beechcraft Baron 58 aircraft. And after the break, attendance still free at Midwest Aviation Expo. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm Barry Canutula, the CEO of King Schools, and you're invited to join me, John and Martha, and everyone at King Schools as we celebrate 50 years of helping pilots like you achieve their aviation goals. Until February 15th, you can save up to $250 on select King Schools courses. Just go to kingschools.com slant 50 years for all the details. But hurry, these savings expire on February 15th. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Attendance still free at September's renamed Midwest Aviation Expo. The 16th annual Midwest Aviation Expo is on for next September, running from the 5th to the 7th. The event is held at the Mount Vernon Outland Airport in Mount Vernon, Illinois, open to all comers in the aeronautical scene no matter their niche. That being said, the expo has traditionally catered to the light aviation scene, offering more affordable smiles per mile than other markets of aircraft. Midwest Expo management promises that despite the growth, they'll retain its distinctive hometown feel show that it has in the past. Medal of Honor recipient Cobra Hilo Commander Larry L. Taylor goes west. The Congressional Medal of Honor Society has announced that Larry L. Taylor, aged 81, a recipient of the Medal of Honor for the Vietnam War, passed away January 28, 2024, at his home in Signal Mountain, Tennessee. The president presented Taylor with the Medal of Honor at the White House in Washington, D.C. on September 5, 2023, for his actions near the village of Ap Go Kong, Binh Duong, Providence, Vietnam. Then First Lieutenant Taylor was commander of a team of two Cobra helicopter gunships responding to an urgent call for support by a four-man patrol team. FAA designates Las Vegas a known drone zone for Super Bowl 58. 
As expected and has been the habit, Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas is a no-drone zone for Super Bowl 58. Drones are also prohibited around several additional locations during the days leading up to the event. Pilots were previously warned to anticipate a temporary flight restriction in the Las Vegas area on Sunday, February 11, 2024. Typical TFRs limit the availability of certain operations, including glider operations, flight training, and unmanned aerial system operations. CAF announces Hall of Fame inductees for 2024. The CAF has selected the individuals to be inducted into the CAF Hall of Fame in 2024. These individuals were nominated by their peers for outstanding contributions to the CAF over many years. Each year, up to four individuals are inducted and recognized for their role in furthering the mission of the CAF. The CAF Hall of Fame induction ceremony and banquet will occur on Saturday, March 2nd at the CAF National Air Base in Dallas. The inductees will be Elaine Webb, Mike Burke, and Donna Blalock. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Petition demands solution to lack of ultralight instructors. Another aviation-oriented change.org petition has surfaced. This time, the petition addresses the serious deficit in our ultralight instruction ranks and seeks the FAA's action in fixing this serious matter. Started by Jim Farr, the chairman of the EAA Ultralight and Light Sport Advisory Council, who has been, quote, tirelessly advocating for the ultralight aviation community's needs and concerns. The most pressing issue we face as a community is a severe shortage of dedicated ultralight aircraft instructors. Prior to the inception of the light sport rules, there were approximately 8,000 dedicated instructors providing ultralight-specific training across the U.S. Immediately after these rules came into effect, this number dropped to zero and has not recovered in any meaningful way to support transitioning pilots and new pilots wishing to take up the sport. This is a critical safety shortfall, evidenced by the numbers of GA pilots who crash on landing due to inappropriate responses to low-mass-slash-high-drag aircraft landing characteristics, and by the significant number of new pilots seeking readily available and convenient training without success." End quote. After these messages, 250th Honda Jet heads for the skies. I grew up in an aviation family. My dad flew airplanes and flew air shows, actually, so ever since I was three years old, the only thing I've ever wanted to do was be an air show pilot. It's cliche, but I get to live my dream every single day. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, the new aerobatic propeller. It's increased the performance of the airplane. It's made the harmonics balance throughout the airplane so much better by far the best aerobatic propeller that I've ever flown behind. Coming to Sun and Fun's 50th Fly in Celebration, Trace Atkins for an opening day concert. I've told the war since I was a kid between Jesus and John. Don't miss Trace Atkins with special guest Sarah Evans. Get your tickets now and be a part of the kickoff celebration for Sun and Fun's 50th fly-in. Go to flysnf.org. Welcome back. 250th Honda Jet heads for the skies. Honda Aircraft has delivered the 250th Honda Jet since it began customer deliveries in late 2015. The 250th Honda Jet recently rolled off the production line and completed the standard certificate of airworthiness, and Honda Aircraft Company Associates celebrated the milestone with a special event at Honda Jet HQ in Greensboro, North Carolina. The Honda Jet earned its type certification from the FAA in 2015. To date, the aircraft holds 14 type certifications around the world. Since then, the bird has evolved from the original Honda Jet in 2015 to the Honda Jet Elite in 2018, the Elite S in 2021, and the latest Elite 2 in 2022. Honda Aircraft Company President and CEO Hideto Yamasaki said, quote, The 250th delivery milestone is not just a number, but a narrative of our constant pursuit of excellence and innovation, end quote. Honda Aircraft Company also announced that the Honda Jet global fleet has surpassed 210,000 flight hours with a reported dispatch reliability of 99.7%. As its fleet size grows, Honda Jet's customers consistently have access to support and services supported by Honda's global network, comprising authorized sales representatives and authorized service centers across the Americas, Europe, and Asia. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.